too scared to go to Japan on your own, so was I. Welcome to Dalton's Detours. I'm Mike Dalton, and I want to share with you my 16-day solo itinerary for the Golden Route of Japan. As I prepared for this trip, I must admit, I was a little bit nervous. 16 days on my own was a lot longer than I've ever done a trip like this. And going to a place like Japan has always made me a little bit nervous. The language barrier always scared me. Uh, even just trying to read the, uh, the you know, the symbols uh, of their of their language. Uh, this was always something that I just didn't think I could do on my own. Once I made this decision and I booked the airline tickets, you know, there took a lot of planning and preparation to get it ready because I really didn't want to be surprised when I got there. That is where, you know, reading hotel reviews, watching YouTube videos, these things really helped to make me comfortable so that when I arrived in Japan, I at least kind of knew what to expect. So what I decided to do was to stick to the golden route. That is Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. And I think I just really decided I wanted to kind of base myself in those three cities, spend a little longer at each hotel, and then maybe do day trips and things like that. I didn't want to overbook everything. Um, I wanted to leave days where I could wake up and just decide what I wanted to do. But I also wanted to book food tours and things like that so that I would talk to other travelers, you know, and kind of get out and see things, um, you know, with an expert. So when I booked the hotel in Tokyo, I decided to stay there six nights. Partially, this just worked out with the days of the week. Um, I wanted to make sure I spent Friday and Saturday in Tokyo and it allowed me to travel on Sunday. To do all of this rail travel, I decided to book a 14 day rail pass, uh, the JR rail pass. Unfortunately, in October, I believe it is, this rail pass is going to go way up in price. This was another reason I decided to go now because I could get that rail pass for under $350. So what I did is on the second day of my trip, I activated the rail pass and that gave me 14 days. So basically the day I uh, arrived in Japan and the day I left, I did not have the rail pass. And it was fairly reasonably priced, you know, to get to my hotels. I stayed at the uh, Tosai Kokone Hotel. It's uh, near Ueno in an area called Okachimachi. Now I picked this location because it was near major rail stations. Um, I just really didn't want to stay in Shinjuku, and I liked the, uh, the kind of the vibe of Okachimachi, uh, and it was a one minute walk to the to the rail station. Perfectly good hotel, so if you ever want to stay in that area, I highly recommend it. Within that six days in Tokyo, of course, I did some of the things that you would expect, the Meiji Shrine, uh, Sensoji Temple, the fish market. Uh, but I also did two food tours, one near Ueno and one in Shinjuku, so those were great. I did two day trips, uh, one that went to Nagano, and then from there I whipped over to Matsumoto to see the castle. And then the other day trip was Kamakura, uh, with the Great Buddha. It's kind of near the sea, I walked out to saw, saw the ocean. It allowed me in those six nights to kind of put my luggage down, unpack everything, and then just really use that as a base to see a lot of things. Uh, one of my highlights in Tokyo, in all honesty, was the uh, baseball game. Let's go, let's go. I took the bullet train down to uh, Kyoto. I stayed fairly near the rail station in Kyoto. Um, I stayed at a hotel called the Daiwa Roynet Hotel. It's probably about a five minute walk from the rail station. And I made that decision because I knew I was kind of be jumping on the JR rail line or on the Shinkansen to go to different places. And so again, within that, I, you know, I did the usual, I did the, uh, the Fushibi Inara shrine, I did the bamboo forest, um, but I also took a day trip to Hiroshima. So it was, you know, an hour and a half there, hour and a half back, well worth it. I took another day trip down to a place called Uji and all the way down to Nara which a lot of people go to, Deer Park. Again, Kyoto allowed me kind of a base to explore different areas. And finally, I did do a food tour. It's called a food, foodie tour um, of Kyoto. Next, I went to Osaka. I stayed fairly near the rail station in the Ibis uh, Umeda, it's called. 
Um, it was not Shin Osaka. Shin Osaka is the place where the Shinkansen goes through. I stayed near Osaka Station. So when I arrived, I had to jump on a JR line down to the Osaka Station. In the end, I found out that my hotel was connected to the rail station via an underground mall. So I could literally come down from my hotel, straight down into the mall, and in about a five minute walk, get to the hotel. Um, the mall was incredible. I ate several times down there. I went to a couple of, <laughs> went to a craft beer place every night. Um, Anyway, great location, great hotel. And it was just simply a Metro or a JR train, maybe like 15 minutes to get downtown or to the main areas of Osaka. From Osaka, I also use it as a base for rail travel. Um, I went to Kobe, Himeji Castle, and a really cool place called Kurashiki. Osaka definitely felt like a, a, a way bigger city than Kyoto, uh, not quite as big as Tokyo. But um, I felt like after those 15 nights right there that I had seen a good chunk of Japan. Of course, not everything. It's never going to get done in two weeks. Uh, but on the last night, I went back up to Southern Tokyo to Shinagawa and stayed in a hotel there for one night, kind of got there, uh, went back out, went to some of the places I really enjoyed in Tokyo again, tried to eat, you know, uh, some of the similar places. I was about a 15 or 20 minute train ride to the airport from my hotel. Uh, so that was kind of the method of the madness on that. I could have flown back from Osaka, but the flight I got was, was more reasonable just going in and out of Haneda Airport. So that gives you a basic breakdown of my, of my itinerary for this 16 day trip. It gave me a chance to really kind of put myself in a location for a while, kind of get to know the area. There were goods and bads with all the locations, but I really felt like when I got finished that I had picked the right hotels for me in that particular situation. The 14 day JR Rail Pass was phenomenal. Buying the Welcome Squeaker card and having that available at metros, vending machines and convenience stores was nice. And so I really feel like my preparation and planning put me in a position where I was fairly comfortable with everything I was doing. You know, booking four food tours and a baseball game uh, allowed me each day to wake up and say, outside of those days, where do I want to go today? What do I want to do? And so I would often spend the dinner the night before prepping and planning. In the upcoming weeks, um, I will be adding on uh, various videos about the different things that I've seen. Don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And we will see over the next few weeks, kind of walking through uh, various things I saw and uh, my thoughts on Japan. Thanks. Dalton's Detours, better get your map out. Dalton's Detours, better get your map out. Dalton's Detours, better get your map out. Where's he gonna go? Where's he gonna go?